this edition of Christopher's Kitchen, Christopher gets a lot of questions about what to do creatively with potatoes, and we think we have a really unique idea that comes from our friends in Britain. Yeah, uh, the English people actually call this bubble and squeak. And that's because this is a uh, mashed potatoes that has cabbage, green onions, uh, and parsley mixed in with the potatoes. And they say that the uh, cabbage, when it's cooking, bubbles and squeaks. So that's why they call it. This is also called, probably what I'm making most similar to, is the Irish call this coal cannon potatoes. Um, and so what I have here is some uh, diced up cabbage, um, some diced green onions, now, this is a great way to use leftover mashed potatoes, too. This is uh, just regular old mashed potatoes that, uh, that we're going we're gonna to be sautéing with all this stuff. Okay, first thing we do is just take our butter. Got about a quarter of a pound of butter here. We'll add our cabbage here. And you don't want any color on this at all, so you want to cook over a medium, sort of a medium heat. And it does take a little while, you know, maybe about uh, 10 minutes to get all the uh, cabbage cooked down. You want the cabbage very well cooked. We're gonna go ahead and add our green onions. Okay. Just let this cook down really good. Then I've just got some uh, some mashed up potatoes here. Now I like a lot of cabbage and onions in mine, so this is gonna look probably a little bit unproportioned, but I, I really like a lot of this stuff in here. Now actually, I think the English let this get a little bit brown. Matter of fact, they would mix this up um, they would mix this up, Mike, and then, uh, then fry them again. Tape them, just mix up this batch, and then put them back in butter until they get a little brown and crispy. And you can do it like this. That's why I say these are more like cold cannon potatoes. Yeah, much like a hash brown type effect. Yeah, they get nice and crispy and stuff. Now, if these are a little dry, you can add a little milk, a little more butter. That'll be great. So I'm just going to mix these up a little bit better in this bowl. And I'm going to add just a little bit of milk to them because I want it to be a little bit juicier. You may not have to do this if your mashed potatoes are already nice and wet. So Christopher, any other seasonings need to go in there? I, I check it for salt and pepper. I always add a little parsley for color, but the green onions have given this so much color, I may not actually add it. Now after I mix this real good, Mike, I think we're going to go ahead and put these in a saute pan, just a couple of dollops of it, and let it get nice and crispy around the edges. This right here is cold canned potatoes. You can serve this just like this with some roast meat, sauteed meat. It's great with anything. Anytime you'd use mashed potatoes, I think, uh, I think the whole family will like this. But right now we're gonna make um, a more traditional English way. And I've got some clarified butter here, getting warm, getting hot. Okay, so you can just make little piles like this in the pan and we'll just turn those over. Now can you use something else besides clarified butter to cook this in? You could use regular butter, but if you do use regular butter, um, be careful that it may, it may burn. I'd rather you use cooking oil probably. So see, Mike, we fried these. Now you can have them fried like that or leave them in the original state just as, a, as an accompaniment, as a side dish for any roasted meat, sauteed meats, any way you use mashed potatoes. These are also great for breakfast. Uh, so you can try them. Just to see which one you like best, the fried ones. We'll start with the regular first. They don't need any seasoning either. They're just right. That butter takes care of some of that salt too. And some of this crunchy part here you might like. If you need a little more butter in your life, you know it's good. <laughs> and the thing I like about this is every time we talk about sprucing up your meal a bit, it does not have to be difficult. As you just saw, it's a relatively simple recipe to put together. If you'd like to know the ingredients, know how it's done, all you have to do is go to kbtx.com, click on the food page. That's where you find all the recipes from Christopher's Kitchen. Christopher Lampo, always a pleasure. Thank you, Mike. Great ideas. Thanks a lot. And for Christopher's Kitchen, I'm Mike Wright.